Peter is denying. Put us through the, the book of James. We are going to lift the covenant of God into his hands. And God will lead him. God will give him the strength. God will give him the power, the wisdom to bring the word out. Let us pray for Pastor Jim. Uh, sorry. Pastor, Pastor Lambo. The teacher for tonight. Let's lift his spirit. Father God Almighty, we thank you for tonight. Oh, Father, it is true that I have chosen the servant to bring the word out tonight. And it will lift his life on Jesus. We choke his life the blood of Jesus. We talk about the blood of Jesus. We commit Pastor Lambo with the blood of Jesus. We commit Pastor Lambo with the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. We commit him with the blood of Jesus. We bring his bring his spirit out. Lift his spirit out. Lift him out, my Lord. Lift him out. Holy Spirit, come and join us. Thank you so much, uh, my dear Elder Obeng. Uh, good evening, all saints of Mount Zion Fellowship Church. Uh, tonight, we are going to be richly blessed because the book of uh, James is one of the most important books in the 
in the New Testament. Um, we are going to, to develop, I mean, we're going to devote uh, the whole of tonight in introducing us to the book of James. What is it about? Who wrote it? Why was it written? And for what purpose? And to whom was it written? And in order for us to be able to fully understand the introduction, I will just read the, the first chapter of um, the book of uh, James, which, which is going to be an insight into all the things that we are going to discuss tonight. The book of James. Um, it, it, it reads, it says, James, a, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greetings then subhead is a profiting from trials he said my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Then in verse 9, which is the perspective of rich and poor, he said, Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass, its flowers falls, and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuit. Then under subheading again, loving God under trials. That is verse 12. This is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approached or approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desires are conceived, it gives back to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is the, no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Then what are the qualities needed in trials? Verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Then do us not hear us only. Verse 21, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks 
into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. And the last verse 27, pure and undefined religion, but for God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Now, may God bless his holy word. This is, this, this chapter one alone, it, it, it's so full of, of wisdom, it's so full of what we have been taught, what we have been reciting, what everybody has been quoting before. And so you can imagine when we start developing this chapter one from next Wednesday, how, how spiritually empowered all of us are going to be. And who could have been a, a person to write something like that? Because what he has written, what we have just read, it, it, it's like something similar to what our Lord, uh, Lord and Master Jesus Christ have been teaching us. So what is the background of the book? The Epistle of James is one of the general epistles, including 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd and 3rd John, and even Jude. And this letters we are sent out as circular episodes not to be passed around and read in several locations. So, so it, 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 it's, it, it's more, more, more like bulletin because it was not written as, a, as like a, a Pauline apostles, but, but letters to be circulated, to be read you know, in congregation to brothers all over the place. And who are the author? Who is the author? Well, the author identified himself only as James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we read in 1 James 1.1. 1, 1. But out of the four men named James in the New Testament, if you remember, we have James, James, James in the New Testament, like we have in Mount Zion Fellowship, Theophilus, we have Theophilus Lambo, we have Theophilus Obeng. So also in the New Testament, we have four, uh, four James. And out of the four James in the New Testament, only two have ever been suggested as the author. James, the brother of John, son of Zebedee, because if you remember, Jesus Christ called the, the two sons of uh, uh, Zebedee, James and John, he said, follow me. And they left their father, and they left, they left their father. So, so that was one, the first James, and then the second James was the half brother of Jesus Christ. Now, the other James, the Lord's half brother, later became the leader of Jerusalem Church because the half brother of Jesus Christ later became the leader of the Jerusalem Church. And what do we really mean by the leader of the Jerusalem Church? Uh, if you remember, after the uh, the uh, the transfiguration of Jesus Christ, after he has left them, and after they received the gift of the Holy Spirit, they were all living in Jerusalem before um, Stephen was um, stoned to death. And the death of Stephen caused a lot of uh, fear and panic that all the all the Christians they, they scattered from, from Jerusalem and ran away to Damascus to Antioch to so many places. But they are still remaining in Jerusalem, the twelve disciples, and including the brother or the half brother of Jesus Christ, James. <clears throat> and um, we now we heard his name when it became obvious that um, they, they, they had to make decisions. And there are so many references in the Bible that, that they pointed to James, the half-brother of Jesus. As we first read in, in, in Acts of Apostles, um, chapter 12, verse 7, 
He said, Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Now, if you remember, Herod arrested James and Peter. And before before the the the, the Passover, <coughs> he beheaded then James. And when Herod saw that the, 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 the Jewish people, the Pharisees they were very happy and they, 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 they enjoy, they, they, they admire Herod for beheading James. So, so he left Peter in the, in the, in the prison awaiting that after the Passover, he will, he will also behead them, uh, Peter. It was that James, the brother of John, the son of uh, Zebedee. And um, can somebody, do, anybody still remember how, 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 how was it that uh, Herod did not get Peter to, to, to behead? Because he arrested Peter and James, and he, he killed James, and he locked up uh, Peter in the cell. He locked him, chained him with all the the the, uh, the the jailer, the prison, the prison warder. He chained him down. But Peter escaped. How did Peter escape? Can somebody tell us? So how did how, how then uh, was Peter released? Did Herod forgive him? God delivered him. How did God deliver him, madam? Can you please explain to us? So God sent the angel. Mm -hmm. The angel went to the uh, to the prison and wake up and tell um break the chain off Peter the Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The angel of the Lord came to the prison and woke up Peter while the, the people, the, the, the prisoners, I mean the, the the prison warders were still fast asleep. And he woke Peter up um, and they passed through the first gate, the second gate, and into the city. And that's how the prayer of the saints saved Peter's life. So, which means it's laying emphasis on the power of prayer as an intercessory prayer that we are making. For, for other people. It goes a long way in helping people. And then I also, <clears throat> and there's another reference in the, in the, in the, in the Bible, which, which is uh, Acts of Apostles 15, 13. He uh, said, the first one, it, it's, uh, and after they had become silent, James answered saying, men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at first visited the Gentiles. To take out of them a people for his own name's sake. Now, in Acts of Apostles 12 17, he said, But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord has brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go tell these things to James and to the brethren. To James, so so he saw that. Because uh, when, when Peter now said he's released, they should go and tell James. He could not have been referring to James, the brother of John, that has already been beheaded. So, so it means that there must be another James, and that was the James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ. So there are parallels in the language of this episode and the speech of James at the Jerusalem Council. Now, when we compare James 1 1 
and the Acts of Apostles 1523. Now the 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 James 1 1 reads the James 1 1 it, it reads a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus. James a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greetings. And then when we compare it with what we have in Acts of Apostle 1523, it, it, it reads, it said, they wrote this letter by them, the apostles, the elders, and the brethren. It said, to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria and Sicilia greetings. To the brethren who are so so in other words it, it, it's uh, it's it, 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 then also we we have another comparables here which is james 1 16 james 19 and, and then we compare it again with as of apostle 15 25. now when you read now james 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 uh, 1 1 16 he said, he, he, he said, it will do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. And then uh, when we now compare it, what was written in, in Acts of Apostles 15, 1523, he said, he, he said that uh, since we have heard that some who went out from us have, have troubled you with words, unsettling your soul saying you must be circumcised so he said you must not be troubled so now we the, the author speaks with a tone of authority that is befitting the position of james the half brother of jesus he is not talking as as somebody that that um, is an outsider but he's talking as somebody with authority somebody who has lived with the messiah somebody who has lived with jesus christ so, so these are all the comparables that we are we are we are referring to, which I'm going to publish, and then you can now read them at your at your um, spare time. So the author speaks with a tone of authority, befitting the position of James, the half brother of Jesus. Now the the the, the high spiritual tone of the book fits with the quote of Eusebius that distinguished this James by adding the title to the just. He said James the just. Now date and destination this is considered to be the earliest of the new testament episodes noting in the episode goes beyond as of apostle 9 the scattered jewish believers of the persecution as we read in acts of apostle 8 1 to 4. can somebody just read for me acts of apostle 8 1 to 4 if you can get it acts of apostle 8 1 to 4 Acts of Apostle 8, 1 to 4. Can somebody find it for us? If you don't find it, no worry. Anyway, it's, it's about when, when, when Stephen, when, when Stephen um, was, was, was stoned to death. If you remember, there was one young man that, that uh, on, on whose feet, the, the people that stoned Stephen, they kept their garments. Uh, he was the one that took permission from the from the, uh, uh, the elders to go to Damascus to go and bring and arrest all those people calling on the name Jesus. Who was that young man, a young Pharisee? Does anybody remember? Hmm? Who was the young man that, that a, 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 a a very powerful Pharisee young man? Whose, under whose feet they kept the garment of those people that stoned Stephen to death. And he later went to the, to the high priest to go and get permission to go to Damascus to go and arrest all the, all the Christians. Who was that young man? That was Saul, Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus. So that was after the, after the execution of uh, Stephen, all the all the Christians, all the Christian believers, they scattered abroad. They ran away from Jerusalem because of persecution. So so they went to see to, uh, to, to Assyria, to, to Antioch, to Damascus, to so everywhere. 
So the scattered Jewish believers of the persecution appears to be the recipients. So so that so that this epistle was written to them. So it was a letter written not particularly to a a, 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 a <clears throat> a group of people in one particular place, but it was it was a, it like a like a newspaper that was sent to the, to the brethren to all these the scattered Jews that scatter all over Asia Minor, all over Asia Minor. So the church was still meeting in synagogue, as suggested by James in, in chapter two verse two. They were assembled in synagogue. So this consideration all points to a date as early as 34 to 35 AD. So in other words, what we are saying is that the, 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 the 12 disciples, they did not run away. They stayed in Jerusalem. But while other believers, they ran away. But they were still meeting in the synagogue. Because if you remember, Peter, Peter and, and, and one other uh, 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 disciple, we are, we are, we are coming to the to the synagogue to to come and worship when, when they saw a beggar and a beggar was begging them to give to to to, to uh, for, for money but peter went to go and meet him and look at the man in the face and said something can somebody tell me what did peter say to that beggar because the beggar was expecting to get money from peter what did peter tell him what is what did peter say to him Mm -hmm. But what? But what I have? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So the so so and and so so they stayed in Jerusalem for almost thirty years after the death of Jesus Christ. So when they say 34 to 35 AD, AD means after the death of Jesus Christ. And so what is the purpose and the theme of this book? It, it has long been a common misconception that Jesus has no unified theme. Or no, I'm, I'm sorry, that James has no unified theme and is simply a series of aphorism or maxim strung together. In other words, what they are saying is, is, is that the, the the theologians they could not they could not uh, uh, gather the book of James together to say this is the theme or this is the purpose this is this is exactly what the the topic or what he is writing about they just feel that it is just a a, 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 a collection of of series of letters series of uh, 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 documents or but but it was a misconception. It was a misconception. So the epistle, however, clearly indicates the, the writer's purpose to develop a primary theme. The theme is, is that believers should meet trials. The theme is that believers should meet trials with faith and wisdom and resulting in joy. As we read if in James 1, 2 to 5, James 1, 2 to 5, it said, it said that um, my brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. So <clears throat> we got to develop that one next week. But the development of this theme is along three lines suggested in verse 119 which become the outline of the book that we will see later now in essence the letter is that of a sermon in in a written form the theme is mentioned at the beginning that is in in, in chapter 1 verses 2 to 5 and then the end is in chapter 5 verses 7 uh, 7 to 11 in what might be called grammatical book ends a strong promise is given at the beginning of the eternal benefit of meeting trials and temptations. That, that is, if you persevere, he who persevere to the end will be saved. That is joy in perseverance. As, as we have already read in, in James 1, uh, 12, who said, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. 
For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now, this promise is reinforced at the end of the book of, of, uh, of James, which is in, in chapter 5, verses 19 to 20, by a practical illustration of the intercession of one believer on behalf of another. Now, the biblical parallel. There are many parallels between literature of the New, of the New Testament and that of the Old Testament. Now, the book of James is particularly related to the book of Job in the Old Testament. In other words, what we are saying is that the, 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 the way in which the book of James was written was also similar to the way in which the book of Job was written. And both deal with question of suffering in the life of believers. So, if, if you remember, the book of Job deals with suffering. And can somebody just 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 tell me who was Job? Why 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 was they mentioning suffering in the book of Job? Who do we? How do we? Who who is Job to us? Who was Job? Can does somebody remember who was Job? Does anybody know who was Job? Job was a righteous man. Job was, yeah. Job was a, a great man of God, and um, he suffered a lot. He went through uh, he went through various obstacles. Um, Satan attempted him so many, so many times, and uh, in so many ways, he lost everything. And uh, at some point. God said to Satan, uh, you can do anything to him, but I will not give him your, uh, his life. Uh, so in the end, Job maintained his, his faith and continued to be faithful to God. And um, in the end, he became successful. God returned everything back to, what he, back to him, all that he lost. That's true. So he went through a lot of temptations, a lot of trials and uh, everything, but he held on to his faith, was very faithful to God, he endured to the end, and um, he was able to um, become successful. Thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you so much. So, so the book of James is also parallel to the book of Job, because they all deal with sufferings of believers. And we are going to compare the, these two uh, uh, books tonight, uh, so so that so that we be uh, 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 on um, we we able to understand exactly what the author is is uh, 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 saying to us. <clears throat> very very interesting indeed. Now, um, it seems significant that God will choose this topic to deal with in the in the earliest book of Old Testament. And this, this is a problem that every believer has to deal with sometime in their life. There's no one of us that have not suffered in our life. Some people, they commit suicide. Some people, they, 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 they endure. Some people, they, they give up, they, they take to drugs. Some people, they take to alcohol. And, 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 and so this, 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 episode is teaching us how we can deal with suffering, how we can deal with temptation, how we can deal with trials. Because trial will come. Because Jesus Christ did not promise us that everything is going to be rosy in our life. We got to suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer. But we must endure. Because that's why he said, he who endures to the end will be saved. So now, now, so what do we have in answer to this age old question? Why does God allow his children to suffer? Why does God allow his children to suffer? The book of Job will answer because we are part of a spiritual war ranging behind the scenes. We are part of a spiritual war 
ranging behind the scene in which our faith vindicates God. We don't know the world that is ranging behind us. Because like uh, the bank just explained, Job did not do anything wrong. Job was very righteous. And he loved God. His children too, they were very righteous. But Satan now could not, could not reach, could not penetrate, could not harm Job because God has already built a hedge, a fence around Job. And that is one of our prayer points that, that we will continue to pray to God that if we live a righteous life, that God should build a fence, a hedge around us so that the arrow of the enemy will not be able to penetrate. Satan could not harm Job. Satan could not harm his children. Satan could not touch him at all because God has already built a hedge around him. So when Satan now appeared before God, God asked him, where have you been? He said, I've been roaming up and down the, the, the earth. And God asked him, did you see my servant Job? I love him. I trust him. And, and, and Satan said, ah, ah. Why, will, why, why, why will he not be righteous to you when you have given him everything? Let me touch him. He will deny you. And God said, really? He said, okay. I give you permission to touch him, but don't touch his soul. So, so that God allows Satan to enter through the hedge. And, and like Adel Beng explained, he went through a real torture. His wife asked him, deny your God so that, so, that, so that we can be relieved of this problem. Even his best friends too, they came and blamed him that it's because you have sinned against God. That's why you are suffering. That's, and, and this is something that all of us are going to experience in our life when we are going through this kind of trial. Our friends will come to us. They will say, my friend, Stop going to church. Let's go and meet a herbalist. Let's go and meet this one. Let's go and meet that, that one. Let's go and meet Mami Water. And be free from this problem. But Job did not. Job did not deny God. Even though there was a time, because everybody, everybody will suffer now. Job, Job too became private. He became uh, 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 very, very frustrated. He challenged God. But he later apologized to God. He did not, but he did not deny God. He did not betray God. So that is what. So, so, so that, that is so that so that and then God vindicates him. In other words, it, it, we are, it's a, it, it's faith, like Ida or Ben said, the faith of Job vindicated God. So that some, sometimes when we are going through our trial. It is not because you are a sinner or because you are guilty or because you are at fault or because you are not righteous, but because you don't know what is what are the sins going on behind. Because God has seen that your life is just like that of Job that you will not deny him. And Satan wants to tempt you. God will say, okay, I allow him. Go and tempt uh, the king Kamara. Because I know that he will not deny me. And the camera will be going through a series of problems, series of problems, series of problems, but he will be thinking, what did I do wrong? Did I offend somebody? Is that any witches? Is that what this so, But he will not know. On, but if he, because of the word of God in him, in his life, he will stay. He will not bend. And then at the end, like, like life of Job, God will, he, 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 will, he will vindicate God with his own faith in God. So, uh, so, so James will answer, because God works through trial to purify and refine our faith in order to bring blessing in time and reward in eternity, which is in, in James 1, 12. And that was what uh, uh, James said, even though it is uh, it, similar to what uh, we have just uh, uh, read about, about Job that Job's faith vindicated God. And but in James 1.12, James said, because God works through trial to purify us 
so 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 that so that God wants us to to God wants us to step to our next level. I said, trial will come, and it's that trial now that we we wake us up, that will make us to realize we, we, how weak we are. Then, then it's at that time we focus on our prayer. It is at that time we move closer to God. It is at that time we work harder. So that, so, that, so that to try to purify or to refine our faith in order to bring blessings in time and reward in eternity, which we read in James 1, 12. He said, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So, so brethren, you must never be discouraged. You must never lose hope. God is not interested in giving us any try that is beyond our capability, is beyond our effort. But trial will come to purify us. So we can also see several parallels between James and the Sermon on the Mount, which James may well have heard. Jesus commands spiritual poverty. As does James. You see, when, 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 you, you, you now, when we now compare the Sermon on the Mount, which, which was written by Matthew, and, and the Sermon on the Mount was, was the one that was preached by Jesus Christ. <clears throat> it was the one that was, was preached by Jesus Christ. And um, and um, James now, being the half-brother of Jesus Christ, must have been there, must have been among the people that we are with Jesus when Jesus Christ was preaching. So when, when, when Peter and when, when James now was now writing this epistles to all the Jews that were scattered all over Asia Minor, his, his, his style of writing was also in, in the same vein as the, the Sermon on the Mount. A few examples of them, it, it's uh, uh, Jesus, it, it's uh, the parallel literature, it, it's, uh, it, 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 it's um, one, one of them, he said, commence spiritual poverty as we read in, in Matthew 5 3. In Matthew 5, in Matthew 5 3, and then also in um, in um, in James in James 1 9. Now can somebody read for me Matthew um, okay, just hold on. Matthew 5 3 it said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. That is that is the summer on the mount. Blessed are the pure in spirit. But but when James was to write it in James now, he, he, he wrote it in James 1, 9 to 10. In James 1, 9 to 10, and, and, and that one reads James 1, 9 to 10, it, it reads um he said, he said, let the lowly let let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field he will pass away. He said, so so that so that the, 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 the Jesus Christ said, blessed are the poor in spirit. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, but but when James was to write it now. <coughs> James now said, uh, he said, he said that let the, lo let the lowly brother glory in his exhaustion. In, in other words, Jesus is, Jesus is not saying that it is a crime to be poor. And, it is, and, and Jesus is, is also not saying that it is a, it's a stigma to be poor. That if we, are, if, if we are poor in spirit, if you are poor in spirit, he said, he said, blessed are the, the poor. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Because they will inherit the kingdom of God. So that you, you the lot of people, they have everything. And when you have, when you have money, wealth, everything, it will, it will, it will, it will, it will not give you the zeal. It will not give you the, 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 the drive to pursue God because why do we pursue God why do we want relationship with God why do we seek God in our life because we need help 
But when you get everything, you b before you wake up, you are, you are counting millions of dollars. And you are having three or uh, six square meals a day. You don't have any problem. Your children are well to do. They are all well to do. Then you, you don't really bother about God. But it is when you are very, very poor that you, that you seek God, that you want God. God help me. God help me. God help me. And that, will, that brings us back again to the story of that young rich man. When Jesus Christ told him, go and sell everything that you have. I'll follow me. And the poor man was very, very sad. And the Lord looked at him with sympathy and the Lord said something. Can somebody re remember what the Lord said about, about, about the rich people? When, when, when the Lord saw that, yes, sir. What the Lord said would be easier for a family to go through and I will be a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, very lay I unto you. For it will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, physically speaking, can a camel enter to the eye of a needle? No. So, why, so, so in other words, if it will be impossible for a camel to enter to the eye of a needle, then how, how hard is it for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven? Very hard. How? He will not be able to sleep. He will not be able to rest. And he would just be like oh, that foolish old man that had everything. He, he, then he look at his band. He see, he was so happy. He said, "Look at my band. I have everything now that I want in my life. I don't have to suffer. I don't have to do anything." The foolish rich man. And God said, "You foolish man. That tonight you will lose your soul." He said, "A foolish man gathering wealth, but he does not know who will inherit it." And that also also reminds us about the story of Nabal. The one that, that uh, King David went to go and meet to, to beg for food for his um, his um, his followers, and never said who is who, who, who is uh, David, the son of Jesse, a traitor that that betrayed his master. And David was going to kill him, but but, but it was his wife Abigail. Yes, sir. Speak as uh, speak loud, sir. Uh -uh. Okay, now Pastor Paul is asking, does it mean that a rich man cannot go to heaven? Very, very good question. A rich man can go to heaven. Because most of the people, most of the people that God blessed went to heaven. One of the, the, the first one was Abraham. Abraham was a very, very rich man. And he became the, the patriarch. And Isaac too was blessed by God. Uh, 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 David too was blessed by God. They were all rich people. But the, but the rich people that, that the, the Lord is saying that it would be difficult for them to enter the kingdom of heaven. We are those people that were serving two masters. They were serving God and mammon. And you cannot serve God and mammon. You either have to love one and hate one or, 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 or hate the two. But when, when you now make money your own God and you are worshipping God and you cannot sleep at night, you cannot go to church, you you, you 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 become a miser. You 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 become a slave because because the Bible said that 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 the, that the love of money. So it it is not having the money, but the love of money is the evil there. So 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 it, it is not uh, because you can use your money to glorify God. If God blesses me, I will bless the church. I bless the church. I bless everybody. So, so I use your word to bless other people. Use your word to glorify God. Because one thing is, in philosophy, we believe that 
the more the more you get, the more you become a debtor. A debtor means that you are the, the, the money does not belong to you. You are just a custodian of the money. The money does not belong to you. You are a debtor. You are a, you are just a custodian to use that money to feed the poor people. But somebody had to be the custodian. So, so the money had to be you. Have, you have to be a twenty through which other people can be blessed. But it is when you hold that money that that you become a debtor of sin. You become a debtor. And that's why Jesus Christ, do not, do, do not store your treasure on earth where moth can destroy, where thieves can come. But store up your treasure because where your treasure is, there lies your, 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 your heart. So, so, that, so that in answer to this, Anybody can be rich. God can enrich anybody. And that is what we are praying for. But when we, when we get rich, when we become rich, then we must not forget that that money is to glorify God, but not to glorify ourselves. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I can't hear you. <clears throat> Uh -huh, uh -huh. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I say thank you so much that that's the answer I wanted you to explain to the saints that are listening, you know. It's not that because you are rich, so you don't go to go to heaven. But when you look at the riches as your God, then it becomes the same. Another thing before we move forward, the same thing is this individual gave a major team is to encourage you know, to endure trials and adverse temptation. What I want to say is that Christians we can be tempted. But one thing we should not forget is that in the temptation, during the temptation, we should not forget that the Almighty God is still with us. You know, when temptation comes, when trial comes, one of the things that they spoke for the kids is the thing that God has forgotten them. God has not forgotten you. He is with you during the temptation. All you have to do is to endure because at the end, there is a blessing. I give a a simple example would be the three Hebrew children. When they were thrown in the fire, and God opened the eye on Nebuchadnezzar, what did he see? He saw Jesus with them, making them four in the fire, instead of three. So, brother, I want us to remember every step when you are in temptation, try it. Don't forget. I will know this with you. God bless you, Pastor Thank you, sir. So, <clears throat> what is the outline of the book of James? James con con uh, is, is divided into uh, five chapters. Now, the, the outline of the book is suggested by James himself into threefold exhortation of uh, chapter 1, verse 19. This is an outline that we will use an example is given below. Now, the, the greetings, chapter 1, verse 1, it said the book is addressed to Jewish believers scattered by persecution. And this most likely referred to in Acts of Apostle 8, 1 to 4. The epistle was probably written before the Gentiles congregations became common. The word scattered, that is scattered all over the place. So this is the now form of a, a despair, which means to sow a seed. And is the word used in Acts of Apostles 1, 4 and 19. So God sows the church by persecution and the church sows the gospel. God sows the church by persecution and the church sows the gospel. So in other words, it was the it was it was deliberate that the Christians should be persecuted in Jerusalem, because if the children were if the if the, if the believers the early believers we are not persecuted, 
they will monopolize Christianity. They will never scatter, they will never take Christianity to the Gentiles. Never. Because if you remember, Apostle, uh, Apostle Peter was even queried when, 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 when he visited the house of Cornelius, a Roman centurion, a Gentile. So so that all of them gathered in Jerusalem and they were they were enjoying it. Christianity, they were enjoying the, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit. So they would never ever 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 think of of, of uh, taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to Antioch, to Syria, to uh, Damascus, to anywhere. But persecution came and scattered all of them. So when, when persecution came and scattered all of them, they took that gospel of Jesus Christ to all those various places around Asia Minor. And that was when when uh, Apostle uh, uh, Paul as uh, was converted, he had his encounter with Jesus Christ on the way to Damascus. Then, then so from Damascus now, he, he was sent by by the disciples, I mean by the by the believers, he said, he said, he said, separate me and Barnabas for the work which I've got to them. So it was then that, that Saul became Paul, and he became Paul, the apostle, together with Barnabas, and then they went to, to Antioch, to so many before Apostle Paul was able, able to do all his three missionary journeys, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, so that, so that, so that in that in, in, in that chapter one, he said, he said, God sows the church, God sows the the church by persecution, and the church sows the gospel. Then the theme introduced in in, in, in chapter one, verses two to eighteen. Chapter 1, verses 2 to 18. The theme is that believers should meet trials and temptations with faith and wisdom. If we do this, we will respond to trials by counting it, 1, with joy, asking for wisdom, 2, 3, learning from them the value of humility, then 4, believing that they hold the prospect of eternal reward, 5, being vigilant to the deception of sin, the, the occasion. Then six, being thankful that God will use them for good. So this, this is the one we are going to develop on Wednesday by the grace of God. The, the first theme, that is in, in, in chapter 1, verses 2 to 18. And then, then the outline suggested in verses, uh, verses 19 to 20. He said, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. The every man here is one among my beloved brethren and is parallel to the every man as we also read in Colossians 1.28. So, so James is writing to his beloved brethren that this, that he's writing to the Jews, not to the Gentiles. My beloved brethren, brethren in faith. Brethren who have, uh, who, have, who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So that, so that all of us in, in Mount Zion Fellowship Church are brethren of one another. Because we have one family, we have one, 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 one master, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, shift to hear in trials. And so then, then verses, uh, verses 21 uh, to chapter 2, verse 26, he said, 1. Let your hearing lead to doing. That is, do not be hearers alone, but do as of the word. And then let your hearing be impartial and merciful, which is chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. And then let your hearing lead to faithful action. That's chapter 2, verses 13 to 26, which is which is coming next week after after the next week. And then 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 then, then, then be slow to speak in trial, which is chapter 3, and then chapter 4. Uh, then, then be slow to wrath in trial. This is chapter 4. And then chapter 5, the theme summarized. It summarized the theme in chapter 5. 7 to 20, say, faithful endurance in trial is rewarded. Which is chapter 5, verses 7, 7 to 12. And then faithful endurance is gained by effective prayer. Which is chapter 5, verses 13 to 18. And then faithful endurance may deliver others who are wavering. So, so, so this, this is, these are very important things that we are going to, to discuss uh, on James. 
and there's no no there's no 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 verse or there's no chapter that that is useless to us every one every every chapter re refer to us as we are living today and I will, I, will, I will employ everybody to please show that enthusiasm to make sure that everybody hook in next Wednesday by the grace of God so that we can start James chapter 1 with all enthusiasm, with, with, with all passion. So I'm going to point, I will post everything to, to you. Free, you can be free to print them out. And then and, and, and I'll bring them to church on Sunday. If you cannot print them out, get them from me on Sunday. Get a, a, a taking camera to print them out for us. And we'll be able to read them together. So is there any question at all before we round up? Any question? Any question? Is there any question? Pastor Pa? Hello, Bank. Any question? Power Car, any question? Dickin Camara, any question? Brother Tolly, any question? Amen. 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 We thank God. Auntie Mary, can you pray for us? Can you close us in prayer? Yes, sir. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify your name, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to this forum to study your word. We thank you for your for, for the teacher. We thank you for giving him clear speaking so that we will understand what he has taught us. We thank you for the introduction of James. We thank you for the book of James because this is what is happening now. Father, we pray that we will remember any time we come through temptation that we will remember the book of James. Lord, we give you praise. We appreciate you, Lord. Even the ones that we are not able to come to the forum, Lord, we pray that they will yearn for the Lord, for the for the Word of God, that they will join us next week to study the Book of James. We thank you, Lord, for everything in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we all share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the love of God and the safe fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest remain and abide with us all. now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall do in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 So I will try and post uh, before you say good night. I will try and post everything tonight on the on the group WhatsApp, so that you can take your Bible and, and study it yourself.